Hello folks and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and I'm here today with a walkthrough of the Stitchers Tarot. Uh, this is a brand new deck. It was just funded on Kickstarter and this copy just arrived and this was actually an early birthday gift from uh, Rick. So thank you to Rick um, for the thoughtful gift. I wasn't entirely um, keeping up on this deck myself. I was vaguely aware that the creators of the Stitcher's Oracle were working on a tarot deck, but I hadn't really, um, you know, kept an eye on it or uh, looked at any of the pictures or anything like that. So today what I want to offer you is kind of a walkthrough first impressions. Um, and I've been thinking about how I want to do this type of video. I don't do a ton of reviews, but I do review um, decks that I feel might be less popular um, on a broader scale. This would be like a specialized one if you're into these kind of uh, handcraft, fibercraft related um, hobbies, I feel. So um, for decks that are not, um, you know, going to have a huge appeal, I think it's nice to put up a walkthrough like this and I'm grateful to Rick for giving me the opportunity to do this um, you know in a timely way. So what I have for you today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kickstarter. I'm going to talk about the um, this deck in the context of my larger collection and you'll see some other kind of related decks here on the table. Um, I'll go through packaging and extras very briefly and the, produ the production of the actual cards you know the, the type of card stock etc. Um, a full walkthrough of all the cards, and then I'll do a shuffling demonstration, and then I want to give you a sample reading. Um, I really like it. Uh, Chris over at Elemental Cardamancy um, and some other tarot tubers uh, tend to offer um, a sample reading at the end of their reviews, and I, I really like that touch. Tom Benjamin does it as well, and I think uh, Hermit's Cave, Simon, also does, uh, does that sometimes. So um, that's what we're going to do today. I'll put timestamps below uh, in the description if you want to skip around or if you just want to see the cards or whatever. All right, so like I said, this was funded originally on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter has now concluded, and I don't, as of the um, release of this video, which is early February 2023, I don't see a specific way to get this deck if you weren't uh, in on the original Kickstarter. However, this... Um, group or artist which is called Stitch Together Studio and uh, let's see her name is Kayana Nelson. Um, I'll link the information below and uh, she did release um, extra copies of the Stitcher's Oracle so I can only assume that she'll have um, overrun on this and make it available. Um, so I'll link her website as well. Um, she's interesting she's mostly a yarn dyer but she also makes um, like uh, notions and little charms and things and then also occasionally does these decks so um, you know kind of like me she has multiple <laughs> multiple overlapping interests here um, how this deck fits in with my uh, collection is that you know I am a knitter um, and I've also tried my hand at spinning um, and I have also tried my hand at dyeing yarn as well as a little bit of sewing. I can use a needle and thread to make basic repairs. I do own a sewing machine. Um, I'm not much of a sewist. I don't really enjoy uh, the non-sewing part, the non -sewing parts of sewing, like ironing and basting and cutting out patterns and all that. So I don't do a lot with sewing, but I do certainly do a lot of knitting um, and a little bit of crochet as well. So uh, that's kind of where my interest comes from. I showed the Stitcher's Oracle, which is the other Stitch Together Studio deck, um, on my Oracle review video, kind of a, an overview and review of my Oracle decks. And I'll link that one in the show notes below. And in that video, I also showed a little bit of the Yarn Tarot, which is specifically about yarn. So not just um, fiber crafts in general or needle craft in general, but specifically things that you can do with yarn. Um, the Stitcher's Tarot says that it is a hand-illustrated tarot deck based on the Rider weight tarot just for knitters, crocheters, spinners, and stitchers of all sorts. So it does cover sewing as well. Um, and I also wanted to give an honorable mention in this category to um, the Inspired Soul Tarot by my buddy Julie over at Peekaboo Rose. Um, she created this deck a couple of years ago and it is definitely like craft adjacent. So her suits are paintbrushes, wine glasses, fountain pens, and buttons. 
and you'll see buttons in both of these decks as well. So, um, as well as needles, you know, sewing needles, which also show up here. So um, I really like this deck by Julie, and um, I feel like I've got enough sort of crafting decks at this point, and I may at some point have a, you know, a, a reconciling uh, this year of whether I really want to keep all four of these. Um, so, you know, we might have a this for that video at some point, but I do want to use this new deck for a bit and kind of see how it goes. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Stitcher's Tarot box and the things that came with it. So this box um, is a slightly different design from their Oracle box. The Oracle is a two-part with the thumb cutouts. And this one is my favorite kind of box. It's the magnetic flap closure. So stays in one piece. You don't have a separate lid to deal with and the closure just clicks together there. Um, it does have this bright kind of bubble gum or birthday cake pink color and that also shows up in the artwork on the cards. You can see some previews here. And yeah, it's a good quality box. I will say that I wish um, that they shipped it not just in a bubble mailer because you can see this box got a bit dented. The cards are fine. Um, but I've seen this a lot in uh, indie produced decks where they'll go to the trouble of making a really nice box and then they'll cheap out on the packaging for shipping. And this seems to always happen. I have quite a few uh, decks with bumped corners. So that's a shame, but it seems de rigueur. Um, the other things that came with this deck, and I will show you the backs of the cards while I show these other things. So here's the deck itself. Inside of the box, you also get uh, this little booklet. It says Quick Start Guide. I like that. Um, it's kind of like something you'd get with a uh, piece of electronic equipment. Um, and it's just a really simple overview. Um, doing a cleansing if you want to. I don't bother with that. It's not something that I um, do in my other practices, so I don't, I don't cleanse my decks, especially when they're brand new. Um, but you can if you want. And then some ideas for some simple spreads. So that's it. And then there is a QR code for an online, a free guide um, to the deck. So I might have to take a look at this because I've noticed that um, the deck is very simplistic in its imagery. And it does say it's RWS based, but um, it's, not, it's not as consistent with the RWS imagery as I would have imagined. Um, I should say that this is not going to be a first impressions. I did do my initial walkthrough uh, on camera and recorded it, but the file got corrupted and the audio was no good, so we're re-recording this. So technically not a first impressions, but that's okay. The other things that came with the uh, funding level that uh, Rick got were these two items. So we have this little sticker, which I absolutely love. Um, it's a cat with three balls of yarn, and this is the image for the strength card. So I really like that. I'm a double um, strength if you do the Mary Kay Greer, you know, numerology for your birthday kind of deal. So I'm always interested in the strength card, even though it's not necessarily my favorite card in the deck. Um, I do I do like this imagery. This is really cute. And then the other thing I really liked, which is ingenious, um, I'd love to have a whole pack of these actually printed up. This is a um, just a little business card size thing with a scratch off fortune. So it says, ask a yes or no question. Um, scratch to reveal the answer and it says ask the magic ball um, so I will probably save this for a time when I need a you know clear answer to a yes or no question um, that'll be fun to use so here is the deck and as you can see it is reflective it's picking up my ring light there I'm gonna turn this off so we don't get that glare um, again you have that bright bubblegum pink color uh, for the backs and you have more colors than this, but these are the main colors that are used throughout the deck. So there's a few more colors used for accents. Um, we've got a ball of yarn with straight knitting needles, a crochet hook, and some sewing needles here, as well as some other imagery. Um, you'll notice that this design is not reversible, so you have kind of a sleepy eye down here and an open eye up here, and the implements are going in a certain direction. So if you were to turn it over, you would be able to see which cards were reversed or not. That doesn't bother me because I don't typically read with reversals. Um, I don't shuffle them in on purpose, so I don't mind this at all. And the cardstock has kind of a linen print on it, I would say. 
I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to show this. I'm going to try to catch it in the light. You might actually be able to see it better on some of the black cards, but can you see that in the middle of the ball of yarn? It kind of looks like you're looking through a screen print, um, is what it reminds me of. It doesn't have the linen texture, like it feels perfectly smooth to my finger. Um, so I think that texture is actually underneath the top coat of this shiny gloss varnish on these cards. Um, the cardstock is nice, otherwise it feels like it has a core and it feels nice and sturdy yet flexible. And you will notice that if I show you the whole side of the deck, it is also gilded, um, which is not something I necessarily want in a deck, but um, this is a nice gilding. It's, it's, a, it's shiny, but it has more of a flat um, gold, so it's not like a, a light gold. It's like a very deep um, brassy gold almost, and I think it goes with the cards fine, um, and it's not sharp. So it doesn't cut into my hands. It doesn't leave sparkles all over my fingers. So I don't have any problem with the gilding. Okay, so now we're going to do um, the walkthrough. And the order of the suits um, here is how it came in the pack. So um, we're gonna start with the majors and then we're gonna go cups, wands, pentacles, and then swords, cause that's how uh, they arrived. Here we have the Fool. You'll see that the um, text on the cards is in this kind of hand-drawn script, and it's a little bit difficult to read, I think, on camera. It's okay to read in person, because I can read cursive writing, but if you, if you couldn't, then it might be a little bit tricky to read. So I'm going to read out the names of everything to you. You do also get a number here at the top. And all of the cards are this white border with the black background for the artwork. Um, here in the full card, we do get a little bit of RWS imagery with this white rose that looks sort of like a pin cushion. Um, here we have the magician. We don't get four different suits because, as you'll see in the um, when we get to the suit cards, there aren't specific implements for specific suits. So, um, that's something we'll talk more about. Here's the High Priestess, and I think it's interesting to me that this upside down cross reminds me of a, um, you know, an inverted cross, a satanic cross, and the choice to include that is very fascinating. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but um, definitely something that stuck out to me. Here on the Empress card, we do get these RWS details, like the uh, 12 stars on her crown. The Emperor. And you'll notice there is variation in the skin tones um, on the hands. There are no uh, whole figures on this deck, just hands. So, um, but I like the inclusion of some diversity here. Um, this Lover's card is interesting. It's a flaming knitting needle puncturing the palms of these two hands. So yeah, I would definitely have to take a look at the guidebook to understand a lot of the choices here. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I like, I like it when people get creative. This is the chariot. And here we have our strength card. I do love this image. Definitely keeping the sticker. Um, here's the hermit. The wheel of fortune is a spinning wheel. You do have the uh, phases of the moon here going around this wheel. Justice. And this little skull dude shows up a lot and he reminds me of the skull accent on the Stitcher's Oracle. We have the hanged man. We have a seam ripper here in the middle of a noose. It's kind of interesting imagery. I get that. I understand the rope and the noose, but the directionality and stuff is a little bit unusual. Um, here we have death. So this is a death's head moth and we have a ball of yarn. We have this thing, which is I think called an Ohio star, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not a quilter, but I know that different quilting patterns have names. I believe that's called an Ohio star. And then we have a knitting needle and then a threaded sewing needle. Temperance with liquid or two colors of yarn being poured from one cup to another. The devil. Uh, 
The tower is a spindle, but this is a hand spindle instead of a wheel. And here we have that Ohio star again for the star card. The moon, I like this moon card, it's very cute. I like the bobbin and the, uh, the needle going around. And here we have the sun. Judgment. And the world. And interestingly, I've just chosen to do, instead of different suits or implements here, just doing the signs of the zodiac for the four elements. So our first suit is the Ace of Cups. And <laughs> I don't know if this is yarn flavored tea. This reminded me of, um, I had a uh, kind of hand lotion um, that I used up and it was called Yarn Ball and I really liked the scent of it. It was one of those hard uh, rub-on lotion sticks and it, there was something in it that was just very earthy and pleasant um, that I couldn't really put my finger on. So that's what this reminds me of, is that yarn flavored tea. Um, two of Cups. Here's the three. I like these kind of cards with this almost Marseille type arrangement. And it's interesting to me that you get, you definitely get a mix of sort of RWS imagery, sort of Marseille imagery, and then sort of it doing its own thing. Here's our four of cups. Again, our little skull dude making an appearance. The five. I would, if it was really RWS, I would have expected to see three of these upturned and two upright. Six of Cups definitely has RWS vibes. If you um, read the Six of Cups as like nostalgia or, you know, um, thinking about your childhood, because this has like a tea party um, vibe to it. Here we have the Seven of Cups, all the different options, the temptations dangling. So that also has RWS. And then we get the Eight of Cups, which is, you know, back to a little bit more pippish, not, not, I don't know. I don't get really RWS from this or from the nine for that matter, which is fine. It's just interesting to me that the um, author of this deck or the illustrator of this deck decided they were going to do RWS and then kind of didn't on every card. Ten of Cups definitely has the RWS thing with the rainbows. Here are our Cups courts. We have a page. A knight with the upturned cup and the needles falling on the floor. This is my nightmare every time I get my sewing stuff out that I'm going to drop needles and then find them later in an inconvenient way, i.e. stepping on them. <laughs> Queen of Cups. I like that she has hand warmers on um, in this. And King of Cups. And this is a, a good pro tip. If you are um, have a ball of yarn that keeps rolling away from you, you can put it in an empty coffee cup and thread the yarn through the handle and that can kind of keep your yarn near you while you work. On to the wands. We have the ace of wand giving us the finger, or the first finger really, not the finger. <laughs> Two of wands. Three of wands. Two knitting needles and one crochet hook. And four balls of yarn. We have the four of wands. Five of Wands. So Wands seems to emphasize knitting needles, but then you get crochet hooks too. Here's our six. Seven. Eight. I like these are size eight needles. Nine of Wands. And ten which kind of gives me Three of Swords vibes with this heart. So for our Wands Quartz, we have Page of Wands. This looks like the same illustration as was on the two. The Knight. Um, it may be hard to see on these cards, but these are like little portals, like little space black holes or 
wormholes or something that the yarn disappears into. Queen of Wands with our Sunflower. King of Wands. And then we have Ace of Pentacles, a Seam Ripper, and then a coin attached. Two of Pentacles, so two buttons being sewn on. Three of Pentacles, again more buttons. And the four. And the five, no buttons here, just sewing. I realize this one is incomplete. Six of pentacles, back to more RWS type imagery with this hand offering something. Seven of pentacles. Eight of pentacles. I do like um, this kind of work in progress. Um, and the symmetry of adding all these buttons to a fancy dress shirt. How long it takes to put buttons on something after you've completed the garment. Nine of pentacles, all different kinds of buttons. And the 10. Again, cross stitch in progress. We have another one of these space vortex things happening here in the corner. Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. These all look like buttons, but I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks uh, three-dimensional here. Queen of Pentacles holding a set of needles. And King of Pentacles with everything that you would need to start a cross stitch project. So, but no buttons in, in either of these two cards. So you can see what I mean. There's no like coherent suit symbol. It's not really a problem, um, but it is very different choice. Uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Here we have the Ace of Swords with a snake and the snake has a an eye on the top of its head. Two of Swords, again, our little skull dude here. I really do like this. Three of Swords, definitely giving us RWS energy here. We have the Four of Swords. And this is more Marseille to me than anything else. This one too, Five of Swords. So yeah, it's interesting. The uh, this arrangement. The Six of Swords really reminds me of the Eight of Wands in the RWS, how everything's going in a parallel direction. And the Seven of Swords gives me um, Six or Eight of Wands vibes for the Marseille with these crossed uh, implements like this. So I'd love to get into the designer's head for this because they made some unusual choices. Eight of Swords, going back to an RWS tile imagery with this bound up figure or group here. Can't say figure because there's no people in here, just hands and then things that you uh, use your hands to manipulate. Nine of Swords, I like this image a lot with all the fancy scissors. And then the Ten of Swords, I think everybody who does any kind of sewing probably has one of this these uh, tomato shaped pen cushions. Page of Swords. Knight of Swords, a big pair of shears. The Queen of Swords, more fancy scissors. And then the King of Swords again with multiple implements and getting ready to attach a button perhaps. So that is our walkthrough. I'm going to 
do a shuffling demonstration for you next. So this deck is just a little bit thicker than a typical like kind of mass market deck like a US Games or Los Scarabeo, something like that. Um, but the cardstock is nice and flexible. As you can see, I can ripple and bridge without an issue. Also slides very well, so even though this cardstock is a bit on the glossy side in terms of reflection, it's not sticky at all. Um, I don't mind this cardstock. I don't think it's my absolute favorite, but like I said, the gilding doesn't come off. It's not sharp. Um, the cards are standard tarot size. The cards are flexible enough to shuffle my preferred way, but they also do this overhand pretty well. So yeah, I would I would give this like an A for for cardstock. Maybe not an A plus, but an A or an A minus for sure. All right, so that's some um, that's that. And then I did want to give you a demonstration. Now, when I originally recorded this video, I did a deck interview, and I think it's only fair to share that um, as it was. So I will do that now. So the deck interview. I asked, what are the deck's strengths? What kinds of questions uh, are not as easily answered with this deck? And then, what can I do to make our readings together the most effective? So, two of swords for the strengths of this deck, and I think I interpret that as, you know, being being clear about kind of yes or no questions or this or that questions, um, helping you make uh, decisions would be a good strength of this deck, um, but not as good at the why, kind of the underlying causes or a lot of elaborate uh, information. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll kind of tell you whether or not something's going to work out but it may not give you a lot of insight as to why that may be or, or what the active causes um, are for that thing. Um, and I'm getting that just because of this. these are small numbers. You know, this is like the challenge position in this spread and it's, it's the ace. So it's sort of like you can't get beyond the initial answer. Um, that's kind of how I'm interpreting that. And then for the two of pentacles, the how can we work together or what can I do to, to make it an effective um, reading interaction is to ask small practical questions. So to kind of echo um, this two of swords, which is just like stick with, you know, will this happen or won't it? Or um, will this be successful or not? Um, versus saying, you know, can you tell me how this person's feeling or something like that because um, with the simple imagery that we've seen through the walkthrough um, you're not going to get a ton of, of detailed information on each card so um, keeping the questions kind of simple and then just looking for the overall you know positive negative or probable not probable whatever you want to say um, in the answers uh, is probably going to be your best bet when working with this deck. So that is, um, again, the Stitcher's Tarot by Stitch Together Studio. And I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this deck now that you've seen it. Um, are you interested in it? Are you not as interested in it? Would you, um, would you be able to read with this deck? Um, do you enjoy stitch craft, etc.? cetera? Uh, let me know in the comments and I will see you for the next one very soon.